Again, Cheers. Yeah. Cheers. 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 Cheers.
we want to be the first pe person to comment so that he notices us and goes, oh, let me click on his page. <laughs> so when I go on there and he's <laughs> been the first to comment, I'm like, damn you, Nico. <laughs> you know, it's everything. So what's everyone up to at the moment? What's the crack, Jack? Yeah, I genuinely want to know what you're up to at the moment mm. as well. I feel like um, after the whole like mayor election, my, my mental is always like, oh, how I can go bigger and stuff. And uh, it, it sort of just put me into like a, a massive burnout because I'm like, okay, what can I do next? Uh, Fine. Like just work, working out what videos and stuff like mm -hmm. that. So I've just been trying to work out on, on, on the rebuild. It's sort of because I'm just overthinking it. Yeah, Are you taking like direction. a moment back from social media and just like living in the, the present? And yeah. yeah, I'm more just trying to work out, okay, what, what the can next I do thing. next? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, wow. when, it, when in reality, the best thing to do is just attack the day and just uh, mm. ATD. Do something. And just, uh, and, and just, and just do something. Um, what about you? What are you working on off the back of everything you've been... After the show, honestly, just like elevating constantly, just trying to get bigger and better. I did drag for the last five years now, and I, I think everything, your job, your, the club is your office, you know? Yeah. It's like mm. if you're hosting or you're promoting or anything like that, you're always around a bar, alcohol, whatever, but I can limit that, so that's fine. <laughs> yeah. So what have you been getting up to? Uh, what have I been getting up to? All sorts, really. I mean, I'm in a really nice place in my career, I think. I think I've established my myself, mm. and I think that... Um, Right now, I'm kind of throwing myself into the creative side of everything. Um, I've started directing all my music videos. Oh, and, um, I've got like, I'm currently working with some really cool brands on like mm. the creative side of conceptually working for them as Jay Gray, but also being behind the whole aesthetic and mm. the whole direction and stuff. So I'm writing a lot of music. You got any um, studio rituals? I take all my rings off. Yeah. Um, and a lot of the time mm. I won't be wearing shoes. It's weird, yeah. isn't it? It has what? to be do with being grounded, I think. Yeah, oh. and almost the stance you're about to, because you have to, you know, I mean, I don't know about you, but you have to, like, sing. Yeah. Ah! yeah. So, Munya, what's, what's yeah. been going on with you? Oh, with me? <laughs> thought you'd never ask. Well. <laughs> <laughs> so, the last 18 months have been very interesting, because really, for me, that was my most creative period. Fine. I was at home, news was happening, and I was literally next to my camera. So that was the easiest time. That was right. so much content yeah. from you as well. Amazing content from you. But what my challenge has been this year is kind of learning to be happy with myself because I'm used to doing my characters. Right. And all of a sudden oh, I'm wow. like doing my YouTube show and my Channel 4 thing and it's like, mm. cool, who's Munya? Getting down to you. And I was thinking to myself, why, why do I feel so weird right now? And it's because I realised I'm actually kind of an introvert. An introvert. Yeah. Mm. Like I really am an introvert. But when people see your videos, which you've handcrafted, mm. people are like, oh, he's singing, he's dancing, he's rapping, you must be an extrovert. Mm. And suddenly when you're brought out of that environment, you, you're like, well, I have to be something that I'm not yeah. even sure of what to do. Yeah. So yeah, long story short, um, I've just been kind of on this process of kind of figuring out what makes me feel most comfortable as me. Mm -hmm. And then when I go into this YouTube show, this Channel 4 show, Hopefully people will be like, oh, it's unknown P, but actually Munya's pretty decent as well. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. yeah. I think a lot of the time people wear, as you said, like it's unknown P and you're singing and you're dancing and da, da, da. People don't actually realise that more time you're filming these things by yourself. Mm -hmm. You are in 100%. a closed space because that's where you feel comfortable. Mm -hmm. There's no one in the room because you don't want nobody in the room. Mm. And actually it's, it's almost like a, a lot of pressure for then you to be like, I'm still that person outside in the world, yeah, you know? Yeah, especially when you get the people, I don't know if you, you guys must have had a version of this, but, you know, if people come up to you and ask for a photo or whatever, my worst one is when they go, I yo, say something funny, bro. Yeah. And uh -huh, you uh -huh, think to yourself, uh -huh, uh -huh. you know, what's going to cut it? Do I give them, like, <laughs> oh, five no. minutes of live in the Apollo, or do I give <laughs> them like a cracker joke? Do you yeah. know what I mean? <laughs> Sometimes I say to them, what, what do you do for a living? He's like, oh, I'm a plumber. I'm like, all right, we'll fix some pipes then. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, it doesn't work in the reverse. Or people just want like, a line that you said mm. or something yeah. like, over and over again. Yeah. It's like, even when you're out there, you're singing, acting, dance, whatever, maybe you're still putting your, a version of yourself that's mm. like 100%, but at home chilling, you're not like that. No one's yeah. like that all the time, 24-7. No. It's not you know sustainable. You go No, burn go out. crazy. Yeah. Yeah. No, someone once said to me, uh, they, took a, they took a picture of me, and it was so brief, so I was so baffed when that happened. It, and they took a picture, and they said, I thought you'd be funnier. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, I'm just chilling. I'm just being me walking down the road. What, what were they expecting you yeah. to do in the picture? Yeah, I'm like, what? Hey, <laughs> wow! Yeah! Wow! No! You'll just be chilling. Right, so we all kind of create in some way. Mm -hmm. You know, we're all kind of expressing ourselves in some way. Hell yeah. Do you ever think about how, you know, how important that is to actually use that for good? I think it's something that's become aware to me recently. Mm. I've, I've always been aware of the fact that if I say this is great or, you know, this is something I do, there's a chance that someone else might go, oh, well, I'm going to do that too. Mm -hmm. But 
As I've got older and actually after seeing like the direct impact, I like was like, you know what? Let me just be who I am unapologetically because mm -hmm. then hopefully it will show other people mm -hmm. that it's so okay to be yourself. Mm -hmm. If you want to stand for something, stand for something. If you're struggling, you are struggling and that's okay. Mm -hmm. But this is something like only, I had to figure it out for myself in the, like the last two years and make all these really big dramatic changes for myself, for me to be comfortable in a place for me to be like, okay, now let me let other people know. Like, yeah. let me actually, you know, make sure that this is like a reoccurring theme in the way I speak and the way I carry myself and mm. the words I use and mm -hmm. how I articulate myself in, you know, my identity or sexuality or whatever it is. Um, because there's other people out there struggling too. Mm -hmm. So it's something I'm new to, but something that I'm currently very aware of. 100%. When you make your first video, Noah comes up to you and goes, hey, just by the, by the way, if you're going to carry on doing this... You don't think you're going to be a role model overnight. responsible for everything that you do. So I think, like you said, I think it's new to anyone who's got an audience because none yeah. of us are trained in influencing 100%. young people. Mm. I even hate to use the word influencer because I'm like, but I never set out to be that. Like, don't yeah, use me as an influencer, <laughs> do you know <laughs> what I mean? I, even though I don't want to be an influencer or I don't want to influence per se, there are things that I do which, which I know will have an influence, or there are places that I feel uh, a bit more equipped to have an influence. Right, so for example, right. if I make a piece of satire and I want to highlight a political injustice, whatever, I'm aware that if you watch that, it could open your eyes to the issue. Mm -hmm. So for those videos in particular, I'll really focus on the wording, I'll do my research, yeah. I'll make sure I'm not being malicious, mm -hmm. I'll educate because in that pocket, I feel like I have influence. Yeah. yeah but I'd never call myself an influence full stop. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like you pick out your pocket yeah. of influence. A hundred percent. It's a weird juxtaposition to be in because like, as you said, like I, I didn't want to be an influencer, but if you are going to have an influence, make sure that you are well researched. Mm -hmm. You are, you do know what you're talking about. You do have experience in it because then you can kind of own that and you can go, well, actually I do know what I'm talking about. And you can advise and you can have those conversations in those spaces. At, uh, well and well informed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for me, like w when it comes to whole, um, like knowing the the power of your voice, it all happened by accident for me. Like, mm. I I just like went I knew about the English Defence League, the EDL, mm. like a racist group, and I just wanted to turn up and expose their racism because they'd always be like, oh, we're not racist mm. or whatever. So I was just thinking, if I can just go in there and act like I'm one of them. They see me as like a, like a person of colour. They're mm. like celebrating me right there because they're just thinking, he's one of us, see, we're not racist type thing. So then they're being really open with me. Mm. Uh, and then they're starting to say on, on interviews and stuff uh, with me that, oh yeah, kick, um, kick the immigrants out of the country. And it was, there was just my opportunity to just expose that. I put it out and then everyone's saying, wow, this is great. Like um, really exposing the EDL for what they are yeah, and stuff. Yeah. And then that's when I really realised, wow, okay, if, if I do something right, if I make the content right, it can really expose situations which people wouldn't otherwise um, give it as much attention much about, yeah. to. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Did you, were you aware in that situation where you're surrounded by seething racists? Were yeah. you like aware of what you were doing? Because actually, yeah. it was the perfect political yeah. message. But did you always intend for it to be like that? I didn't think it was going to go as big as it did, but I knew what I wanted to expose. So mm -hmm. I, knew, I, knew, I knew the message which I, 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 I wanted to show in the video, mm -hmm. um, which... Uh, which yeah. you did very well. Yeah, good for you, yeah. No, no, thank you. Talking about, like, you know, being, I guess, going on telly, going on a TV show, you kind of come out the other, other side of it and you wake up one day with, you know, like I said, all these followers and this whole new audience. It's like, how do I deal with this? How do I navigate it? Especially when you get a lot of racist threats, mm. you get unsolicited opinions and you get people trying to tell you down all the time and it's kind of like how you use your voice and your platform and go through life is just by just being yourself and not retaliating. Like, I like to, you know, bring in change and positivity, but I also am not going to retaliate to negativity. Like, right. I'll never, like, rise to it, ever. Like, just leave it, keep it moving, let your work speak for, speak for itself. Yeah, it maybe I'm just, like, naive, but, like, I feel like, off of the back of Drag Race, I would never expect for, for that, for you to get, receive those sorts of messages, because in my mind, why watch something you're opposed to? Don't tune into it. But people do, people just do though in yeah. life. People like to hate on things. People are scared of what they don't know. I mean, I came up the show with a lot of, I would have people, um, I guess not relate to me because I just had just good parents. Yeah. But honestly, I think I must have like sashayed out my mum's foof, honestly. I was very <laughs> me from the beginning, never changed, always dressed in certain ways. What did um, you just say? Sashayed out my mum's foof. What the hell does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> it means you what know, it means. You know, I sashayed out my mum's foof. I was gay from the get-go, ready to go. There was no apologies, no hiding anything. My granny's very religious, and when I was younger, she was 
it came to a point, I, she lives in London, so I would come here every six weeks holidays. And she just took a look at me and the way I dressed, and she like hated, like slapped me like in the park. She's like, you're a boy, you're not a girl. Da -da 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 -da. And my mum and dad found out and they were like, don't you ever like leave him alone like yeah. he's just doing this thing is what it's so coming back to my parents my message off the back of that was like if you have good parents you can bring people up bring people up like myself mm -hmm. you know who don't are not going out you know yeah. trying to hurt the world you mm. know we've got good vibes about us and that's because i get that directly from them so mm. that should be an inspiration to other parents who are raising queer kids Amen. who don't know how to deal with their or yeah you know, navigate their life because they're not queer themselves, maybe, but it's just give them the love and support that they need, nurture them, and they will grow up to do big things, hopefully. Mm, yeah. How do you deal with the racism, like the, the hate comments? I literally don't comment on it, and sometimes I feel like maybe I should, and that's kind of that inner battle that I have with myself. Sometimes it's like, do I react to this and try and make it different and change, or do I leave it alone mm. and keep my own sanity right. and not lower myself? Right. To this, yeah. you know, and you can't let people's opinions and crap like try and sway your look or your feel, because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, it's you from yeah. beginning to end, isn't it? Yeah, 100%. and I, I, and I, you know what? I thank people like you. I feel like when I was younger, I struggled so much mm -hmm. with who I was, like yeah. identity-wise. But I got around around to the age of like 25, and I, I was meeting people like yourself who who were who they are, mm -hmm. happy to be who they are, yeah. led with who they are, mm -hmm. and didn't need to kind of like follow up and go, oh, well, it's because or because. No, it's just, if you don't like it, leave. Yeah, Get and out. that off of the back of mm -hmm. that, I was like, oh, I can be me. Yeah. Mm. And it's fine. Mm -hmm. Jay Gray and Jen, mm. I do kind of like, I would say like Jay Gray's my drag name and yeah. then like Jen, yeah. Jen is me, you know? Mm -hmm finding home and, and comfort and safety mm. in Jen mm -hmm. and realizing that she's good enough and she can hold space in these mm -hmm. places too, like is, is, was definitely like a groundbreaking moment for me, I 100%. think. So. I mean, it's interesting, isn't it? Cause there's just, there's different levels to it. Like there's these profound, deeper levels of who am I? Yeah. And then in, in our industry, there's this whole idea of even just your looks. Yeah. Mm. You know, one thing that I kind of discovered uh, when, when things start to really go well was, you know, people always want to tweak things about you. Mm -hmm. So for me, thank God, no one ever said anything about my eyebrows in school. So I never developed a complex about really? them. Yeah, no one ever said anything for some reason. I got it. <laughs> <laughs> I got it. <laughs> so I never had a complex about my eyebrows. And then obviously when I started to make these social media videos that were being seen far and wide, if people start to say something about my eyebrows, I didn't care. Right. But I, I, I figured out that if I did change my eyebrows, then there was a long list of things you've still got to do for people for them to like you. Oh, you're never, so it's like, never going to be... Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. fix your hairline, then your mm -hmm. teeth. And I was just thinking, do you know what? This ain't build a bear. Do you yeah. know what I mean? I, I actually sat down with myself and said, am I actually going to start ticking things off, like paying to look like somebody's Ken doll? I yeah. said, hell no. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I used to proper like struggle uh, with like, uh, like myself. Like um, I, I, was, I grew up in a place called Stafford. Uh, which is like a very white town. And like at, at nine years old, someone called me the N-word. Like uh, mm -hmm, at nine mm -hmm, years old, mm -hmm, I was back. Mm -hmm. I was, I, like, cause uh, I didn't know what it was. You'd but... never heard it before. Yeah, that's yeah. that. I've been through that. I was mm -hmm. like, oh, well, what's yeah. that yeah. thing? You have to yeah. go and ask your parents yeah. and then they, and then like shocked by it. It's like, mm. that's the whole thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah but like, so I, I, I was bullied out my first school. Like, oh, um, wow. yeah, yeah. So like me being black was like the first insult which wow. people would say. Mm. Um, so like I, I just struggled with it. And then I remember just thinking in high, like in high school when I, was going, when I went into like year seven, I was thinking, that's a new place. If any of this stuff happens, I'm just not going to take it. Like, it, it, it almost made me start, like, be like if, if someone's going to come to me, I'm, go, I'm going back like, harder. Back, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, and uh, and then from there, that's when I, I really started, like, building my identity, like, throughout high school. But I think I really got on top of it in um, in college. I feel like I'm, now, now I'm at a point where, like, I know who I am. Like, mm -hmm. no one can tell me, oh, yeah, um, oh, this is what you are, this is what you are, because mm -hmm. I, I know what I am. I know what type of content which I want to make. Mm -hmm. and, and stuff like that, but yeah, and I, I used to proper struggle with that type of stuff. Mm. So I, like, I, I admire the fact that throughout, like, throughout you are, um, mm. you've always been, you've always been you. Well, it's like those primary school years; they can make or break anyone. That's one of the most interesting things I think about when you create something, because uh, yeah, and, and you see a lot of really great satirists do this because with satire, you know, you are taking the mick out of something. You know, even mm. in the videos that Nick has made, like these EDR things, you know, s someone to create the joke, someone has to be the butt of uh -huh. the joke. Mm -hmm. But actually, you can choose as a comedian how you want to do that. Yeah. If you want to punch down, mm. you can. But actually, that's, that then runs a risk of being mean. Mm. So with my comedy, I've always gone, right, well, I'm going to punch up. Yeah. If yeah. you punch up at the people in power, 
who mm -hmm. should know better, mm -hmm. you're then on the side of the yeah. people. Yeah. Do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. So that is something that, that's like a conscious choice I've made to be like, cool, I am going to make satire. There is going to be somebody at the butt of the joke, but it's always going to be the right person. Right. Yeah, yeah. That's a conscious decision because I could make videos either way and people, some people would still laugh, mm. yeah. but I think I wouldn't be bringing any more positivity into the world by punching down. Again, right. I think that ties in with the fact that you have to be aware of your yeah. mm -hmm. influence. You have to be course. aware of like the, the power that you do have in these, mm. in these situations. How important do you think it is to have a sense of humour? Um, for me, I need it because a lot of people see my videos and they think, you know, is everything just a joke to this guy? Right. But actually it's because if I take it for what it is, I'll just break down. Yeah. You know, last you year was a very tough yeah. year. So I was thinking, all right, it's literally a case of, do you want to laugh? Do you want to cry? And mm -hmm. I always just choose laughter. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I just choose to be like, to do the eye roll, to make the video and go. Keep it moving. It's terrible, but my mission is to create uh, such a, such a powerful video that when you next think of that thing that has made you miserable, you, will, you then connect it instantly to the joke. Yeah. It's always connected to a joke now. Yeah. So it's like, feel a bit bad and then you, you laugh you at the end the of it. In it. So yeah, humor is super important. I mean, um, if you think about, what, what I love about laughter is that it is a universal language. Right. So for example, uh, Drake follows Nico. Now I know this because I'm constantly on the lookout to see when is this guy going to follow me? <laughs> no, <I'm joking>. um, <laughs> That's my cousin. No, I just so um, you know, like Drake follows Nico and uh, he follows a lot of comedians on the scene. So he follows Nico, he follows Chunks, he follows probably Amelia. Another, Amelia. Those are all comedians. Like we've probably seen them before, we met them before. We know that they're just like normal people like ourselves who are creating. But and you think about it, how the hell are they? has their content managed to travel through all of this noise halfway across the world to mm -hmm. one of the biggest stars on the planet. It's because everyone likes to laugh. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So to me, laughter really is a superpower. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? And that excitement of, so it's not just the benefit it gives to society, but it's also just the excitement of where will it take me? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. What places am I going to go? Right. Uh, same with music. Mm. I, I forget who, which artist it was who ended up on Barack Obama's playlist, but how the hell Poppy does agenda. That, yeah, Poppy agenda. Poppy agenda. Yeah, how, yeah. how the hell does that happen? It's yeah. because some things are universal languages. And when you grow up in a way where you feel like you can't connect with people, like where you were growing up and everyone else was growing up, it is a relief and also a joy to find something that actually connects you to everyone. Yeah. yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Right, my friends, it's time for some booth truths. Born ready, baby. Are your baby. clamped together? Oh, yeah. Right. What's the best lockdown DM slide you've received? Well, uh, <laughs> I did get an advert asking me to be the face of an erectile dysfunctional. Uh, Stop. Function ad. You, had, you did that? No, I didn't do that. <laughs> I'd love to do something like that. <laughs> what? Hit me up. What was the company? Just hit me up, please. <laughs> what made them sit there in this room and go, wait, we need someone who just captures the essence of erectile dysfunction? Come on. Do you know what, Munya? <laughs> just That's our guy. Him. Something about him feels floppy, you know? <laughs> feels loose. Oh, Nico, this one's for you. Oh, I am scared. Let the person to the left send a text on your phone. Oh, God. <laughs> Is that me? That's yeah. you. Give me your Oh love. my god. I'm trying to think what contacts Nico would Didn't you say have. Drake follows you? Yeah, but that, no, that's you. No, it's you have me a text. Are you on numbers game though, yeah? yeah. Well, I'm about up? to go through the contacts and see what we have available. Oh, nice that's phone. good news. Do it, do that's it. good news. I'm, do you I'm, have um, <laughs> chunks on here? Do you have. I do have, <laughs> I have, I have, I have chunks new. Yeah, go chunks. Who's Don't Prank Him Chris? So there's a story. There's a story there. I was hoping you didn't see okay, that. Okay, fine. No, let, me, <laughs> I, let me text Chunks. A prank call gone wrong. Well, I'm, I'm texting Chunks saying, yo, bruv, what you did wasn't cool. <laughs> How the fuck did you find out, man? Yeah. Very confusing, but... Yeah, that would make me sweat a little bit. Yeah, good. Like that. good. Great. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, now I've got to do one. Yeah, yeah. please just say person to your right. <laughs> I'm Take quite phone. scared. If I don't like Message it, can anyone. I just pick another one? Perhaps. No. I have a literal anxiety. Ah! Okay, fine. If you had to self-isolate with someone around this l table, who would it be and why taste? <laughs> I'll take it, I'll take it. We'd have a good time. Yeah, yeah. why? Wait, tequila, just... to the oh, tequila. Okay, yeah, Films. Fine. Tequila. We can watch like... Lord of the Rings. Oh, exactly. We, we can do each other's makeup. Oh, we'd have I can a good borrow time. your perfume. Yes. Sorry, no shade. That's no, fine, it's fine, it's understandable. Oh, what was your first job? What was my first job? What was my first job? I had so many. God. What's going on? Yeah. <laughs> I love it. I love it. <laughs> you have to I got you. an easy one. <laughs> na, 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 na. <laughs> my God. I need my first you job. Pick this off of me, man. I don't know. I don't know what order it was. I've done all sorts. Like dead filing for law firms, cleaning out snake tanks, you know. 
pet Bring shops, I've worked at Gas Jeans, Nando's, I've worked here, I've worked all sorts of clothes shops. And what was it like cleaning out snakes? Smelly. I used to own eight snakes. Wait, you're scared of spiders, but not snakes. I know. All priorities all I'm over. Did you used to feed the mice and stuff? Yeah, right. Yeah, I'd go to the pet shop every week and I'd buy like loads of frozen little the baby mice. I put yeah, yeah. pinkies, put them in my freezer, and you get it out to frost the babe, and then you know, give it to the snake. Oh God. All right, pass over. Come it. on, baby. Yeah, yeah, switch oh. up, switch up. If you could trade lives with anyone for the day, who would it be? Um, ah, let me think. Let me think. Do you know what? I would say, um, I would say Gordon Ramsay. Do you know why? Imagine you just want to whip up yourself a snack, yeah? Mm. You know that snack is going to be extraordinary. Mm. But, you've, but, but you are Gordon Ramsay, so, you're, so you've ate that. You're used to it. You're this, used you're, to it. This is your you, you palate. You come with your, all of yeah. his senses uh -huh, and his memories. Uh -huh. yeah, you'd have he, kids. But he also has, uh, his hands are probably heat proof. And his balls are probably heat proof because you hear what they say about of everything you want in life and you want heat proof hands. Yes. <laughs> of anything you can and have balls. in life, heat proof and hands and balls. Yeah, but you know, you know <laughs> why to make chef, a good snack. You know why Jeez. chef's balls are heat proof? Because when they stand near the cooker, the uh, the heat from the pans right. you know, makes your your balls more heat proof. <laughs> No, that, that, that was disappointing. If you could trade <laughs> okay, places right, in life okay, with anyone, or no, no, you could do it, anything it. in the world, uh, I would have heat-proof balls. Yes. <laughs> what does it say? Okay. Now, who's someone we should follow? I'm friends with someone called um, AJ Shabil, who makes very good content, and I feel like he doesn't get the recognition he deserves. No. So I feel like the best person who I can say right now is, um, is AJ. Mm, he is AJ put Shabil. a nice on the map. Yeah, mm, yeah. Mm -hmm, 100%. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Where would you go if you were invisible? Oh, I'd go to like, oh my God, I'd like, um, I don't know, I'd like go backstage at a thing, but I'd like sneak into someone's dressing room. But I would break into Tace's dressing room Here and I'd be invisible mm. and I'd really... You'd be very entertained. I can imagine. Mm. What is your booth truths or mantra? I don't know, it's just really simple, really get up, get out, be positive, give positivity mm -hmm. and have a good time. I like that one. Keep breathing. Yeah. Nico? <laughs> Keep breathing. Yours is this. Um, yeah, no, it's true. That that is that is. But also, it's an abbreviation. I don't know if you guys heard it, but it's um, ATD, which means <laughs> uh, I'm actually thinking of getting a tattoo. Like, oh, <laughs> you should right, get it really right small underneath your wrist. Yeah, yeah, yeah mine is shushy. Schmuck. Mine is shushy schmuck. Yeah, no, that, that's a good one. Right? <laughs> no, no. The child's text about. Let's see. Mm. Find out. Content for Nando's booth truth. <laughs> 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 Sorry. No. Sorry I spoiled it. I can't be frank. <laughs> I told you, Jay. That's I so told funny. you. I'm How do you know? You're right. Yes, that's what it was. Oh that's what it God. was. These guys <laughs> set me up. Nando set me up. Everyone around the table set me up. It was Jay. You want to you say anything? Hi, Chunks. I just wanted to text you. 